Good day, students. Uh, welcome to part two of the AP Calculus AB um, 1998 multiple choice questions. Uh, we're going to be going over questions six through ten um, of this review um, series. Remember, you can gain access to this document. I'm working up on MacBestServe.com and download it and then uh, gain access to all this information. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at question number six. All right, so number six. Um, it stated that if x squared plus xy equals 10, then when x uh, equals 2, dy dx equals what? There are two ways of doing this problem. There's a long way and there's a shorter way. I'm going to uh, uh, solve this problem in a shorter way. Uh, so we have the equation x squared plus xy equals 10. So you can solve this for y, and then you're going to have a rational expression on the right side, and you, well, you might want to solve differentiate that using the quotient rule. But we can also differentiate this implicitly in order to get dy dx, okay? So um, if we want to differentiate this implicitly, then we also have to find out what the value of y is because there's going to be a y value um, when we differentiate this implicitly. So how do we find out the value of y? Well, when x is 2, what is y? So when x is 2, we will plug 2 into this value because we're told that x is 2. We have 2 squared plus 2 times y equals 10. So we solve this for y. We have 2y equals, this is 2 squared is 4 minus 10, uh, is 6. And then you divide both sides by 2, and then you have y equals 3. Okay? So when x is 2y is 3. Okay, now we have x and y. Now we're going to differentiate this. Uh, function implicitly and then plug in I'm an isolate y prime substituting in the values of x and y okay so differentiating implicitly the derivative of this using the um, power rule is 2x to the 2 minus 1 which is just 1 plus xy we can look at this as u and v so this is v right here and this right here is u so these are two separate functions. You remember the derivative of uv prime, the product rule? So uv prime is basically u times v prime plus v times u prime. Okay? So u is x, v prime is the derivative of y, which is y prime, plus v is y times u prime uh, as the derivative of x, which is just 1. Uh, so that's that, applying the product rule to x and y. And then the derivative of 10 is just 0, okay? All right, now what we're going to do is uh, we're going to go ahead and substitute the, va substitute the values of x and y into this equation and, and isolate y prime, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. So we have 2 times 2 plus 2 times y prime, which is what we're looking for, plus y is 3 equals 0. All right, so let's solve this further. 2 times 2 is 4 plus 3 is 7. So we have 7 plus 2y prime. Uh, let's write this properly. I don't know what I'm writing. Um, 7 plus 2y prime equals 0. All right, so to get y prime by itself, we subtract 7 from both sides and divide by 2. So that gives us y prime equals negative 7 over 2. So our answer is option letter A. All right, let's move on to number seven. We are finding the definite integral from one to E of the uh, rational expression x squared minus one over x dx, okay? All right, this looks really complicated, but if we break down this fraction, this rational expression into two fractions, then it becomes extremely easy to evaluate, okay? So what we're going to do is express this as the integral for 1 to e of x squared over x minus 1 over x. So let's do it decomposing this um, expression right here. All right. So we have that. Now let's simplify. So this in parentheses simplifies into the integral from 1 to e of x squared over x is just x uh, minus 1 over x times dx. Okay? Alright, now the, the, the antiderivative of x is x squared over 2 using the power rule for integrals minus the uh, 
integral of 1 over x is simply the natural logarithm of x. And this will be evaluated from uh, 1 to e. Okay? Now, uh, we're going to make use of uh, FCC part 2. We plug in the upper limit of integration first. e squared minus 2 minus the natural logarithm of e. Minus, then we'll plug in the lower limit, which is 1 squared, which is 1 over 2. Plus the natural logarithm of 1. Okay? Why did this become a plus? Well, it's supposed to be a minus before, but because of this minus distributed to that minus, minus times minus is plus. That's why that, this becomes a plus. In this problem, it doesn't really matter because this is going to be a zero anyway. So, yeah. All right, so we have e squared over 2. The natural logarithm of e is just 1 minus 1 half. And then the natural logarithm of 1 is this is just 0. All right, so when we simplify this, we have e squared over 2. 1 is 2 over 2, 2 over 2 minus, negative 2 over 2 minus 1 over 2 is negative 3 over 2. So we, there goes your final answer, which is letter E. Okay, let's move on to question 8. Uh, question 8 says that f and g are differentiable functions with the following properties. g of x is positive and f of 0 is 1. If h of x is equal to f of x times g of x and h prime of x is equal to f of x times g prime of x, then f of x equals what? So you notice that you're given h of x as being f of x times g of x. And then you're given the value of the derivative, which is not exactly what we expected. So what we're going to do is let's apply the, um, the appropriate formula for finding the derivative of this function to this function and then set it equal to this desired result. And then we, that will help us determine what the value of f is, okay? All right, so how do you find h prime here? We have the product of two functions, so we're going to use the product rule. Okay, remember this is u, and this is v, and then the uv prime is basically the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first, all right? So we're gonna apply that here. So h uh, prime of x is gonna be u, which is f of x, times the derivative of v, which is g prime of x, plus v, which is g of x, times the derivative of u, which is f prime of x. Okay? So using the product rule uh, for derivatives, this is what we got. But in this equation, you're told that f of x is, I mean, h prime of x is f of x times g prime of x. So, so they're both equal to each other. So we have f of x times g prime of x is equal to f of x times g prime of x plus g of x times f prime of x, okay? If we, if we subtract f of x times g prime of x from both sides, we will clearly see that we'll end up with the equation g of x times f, of f prime of x equals 0, okay? All right, so um, this is what we have. If we subtract f of x times g prime of x from both sides, we end up with this equation. Now, one of these has to be zero using the zero product property, all right? Either g of x equals zero or f prime of x equals zero, right? Well, we're told earlier that g of x is greater than zero. So we know that g of x cannot be zero. So if g of x is not zero, guess what? f prime of x must be zero, okay? So if f prime of x is zero, then that follows that um, f of x must be a constant. Is a, is a, f of x equals a constant. How do we know that? Because the derivative of a constant is 0. All right? So is f of x 0 or is it 1? It's easy for us to see that it's not 0. If it were 0, it would take out this piece right here. Um, and also, we're told that f of 0 is 1. So we can easily see that f of x is equal to 1. Okay? So there goes your answer. So the answer is option letter letter E. Okay, let's move on to the next one. All right, so for number 9, it says the flow of oil in uh, barrels per hour through a pipeline on July 9 is given by the graph shown above. Of the following, which best approximates the total number of barrels of oil that pass through the pipeline that day? Okay? So we have the rate and we have the time. You remember quantity is basically rate times time. 
this is the elementary formula for um, constant a constant uh, rate but we have a variable rate here the rate is a function uh, so let's call let's call that uh, um, f of t okay so in this case the quantity the total quantity uh, is going to be an integral okay because we're integrating a function that the, that the, that's not a, we are um, computing the product of a function that's not a constant with time all right so we have to use an integral to to compute this so we're going to express this as an integral from 0 to 24 of the function f of t dt okay so this is the instantaneous change in time times each respective uh, um, rate all right f of t is basically the rate all right so how do we compute this well we don't have an explicit function that we can integrate to find what the value of this integral is so we know what an integral is right it's basically the area under a curve right so we're asked to find the approximate uh, quantity of all the pass through this time so if we can find the area under this curve then that will give us an approximate answer all right so if we look at this shape that we have here we can um, basically use our knowledge of geometry to use some uh, shapes that we know the area of to estimate the uh, volume here. So in this case, you notice that I can break this into a rectangle and a triangle, right? So let me go ahead and sketch that for you to see. So we have, this is just an approximation, remember? So we have a rectangle here, right there. And then we can approximate the upper region with a triangle right there like that yeah okay so the area of this rectangle times the area of this triangle will be a good approximation uh, of of uh, the amount of oil that flowed through in this 24-hour period okay so uh how do we find the area we know what the area of a rectangle is the length times width and then area of a triangle is one half base times height all right so um area of rectangle is going to be the length uh, which is um, 100 times the width, which is 24. So that is 2400. And then we have the triangle. Area of a triangle is one half base times height. So for the area of the triangle, upper triangle, we're going to have one half. The base of the triangle goes from 6 to 18. 18 minus 6 is 12. Times the height, 100 to 200. 200 minus 100 is 100. Okay, all right. So half of half of uh, twelve is six. Six times one hundred is six hundred. All right. So the integral can be approximated uh, with the sum. Okay. So the quantity, which is the integral from zero to twenty-four of f of t dt, is approximately the sum of these two. You just add them up. Twenty-four hundred plus six hundred is three thousand. So is approximately 3,000 uh, barrels. All right, so our answer is option letter D. Okay, let's move on to number 10. Uh, we're given a function, oops. We are, we're given a function and we're asked to find the instantaneous rate of change at x equals two. That's basically another fancy way of saying the derivative at x equals two. That's what the instantaneous rate of change is or the slope of the tangent line. So the function at x equals two, so with f of x equals x squared minus 2, all we just have to do is find the derivative of this function and uh, plug in 2, okay? So we can't factor this. This is a prime expression up here, so we cannot factor reduce or use any tricks. We have to differentiate it the way it is, all right? So the numerator function, I'm going to call it u, and then the denominator function, I will call v. We're going to use the quotient rule here, okay? So remember what the, co the quotient rule is, right? If you have u over v prime, um, it is u times, and actually it's u, u v prime, I mean v u prime. So it's a v, v u prime minus u v prime over v square, okay? So u is x squared minus 2, this entire numerator, and then v is the denominator x minus 1, okay? 
So uh, let's apply that here. F prime of x is going to be uh, v, which is x minus 1, times u, the derivative of the numerator, which is simply 2x, minus u, which is uh, x squared minus 2, times v prime, which is just 1. You can just rub that. And that whole thing divided by v square, which is x minus 1 square. Okay? So do we have to reduce this expression? Absolutely not. We're evaluating it when x equals 2. So we can just plug in 2 into this derivative expression and then see what it simplifies into. Okay? So we have 2 minus 1 times 2 times 2, times two minus 2 squared minus 2 over 2 minus 1 squared. Okay? All right, so 2 minus 1 is 1, 1 times 2 times 2. 2 times 2 is 4, right? So 4 times 1 is just 4. Minus 2 squared is 4 minus 2, which is 2. Over 2 minus 1 is 1, 1 squared is 1. 4 minus 2 over 1 is just 2 over 1, which equals 2. All right? So we can clearly see that our final answer is option letter D. So there you have it. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this uh, presentation. Feel free to subscribe to my channel by clicking up here. Um, and please post a comment to let me know what you think about this presentation. More clips can be found on microserve.com, including the document I was just working with. Thanks for watching again, and have a wonderful day.